Imagine being institutionalized with psychotic mental illness on multiple occasions, being told at most you'd be able to hold a job doing menial labor, and then going on to win a MacArthur Genius Grant. That happened to USC law professor Ellen Sachs. Listen to her describe some of her journey. When I'm a psychotic, I often have the delusion that I've killed hundreds of thousands of people with my thoughts. I sometimes have the idea that nuclear explosions are about to be set off in my brain. Occasionally, I have hallucinations, like one time I turned around and saw a man with a raised knife. Imagine having a nightmare while you're awake. As a young woman, I was in a psychiatric hospital on three different occasions for lengthy periods. My doctors diagnosed me with chronic schizophrenia and gave me a prognosis of, quote, grave. That is, at best, I was expected to live in abortion care and work at menial jobs. Fortunately, I did not actually enact that grave prognosis. Instead, I'm a chaired professor of law, psychology, and psychiatry at the USC Gould School of Law. I have many close friends, and I have a beloved husband, Will, who's here with us today. Thank you. In other words, an educator who's here to educate us. Here with us in studio, USC law professor and MacArthur fellow, Ellen Sachs. What a rare opportunity it is to speak with someone who's so frank about this. And you said you thought you, you had a hunch you weren't the only person. Yeah, it's sort of interesting. So I would like make the rounds talking about my book and about my story. And people would say, you know, interesting, Ellen, but you're unique. Other people aren't like you. And I had a hunch that that wasn't true, that there were other people, that there was just so much stigma they didn't come forward. I had the luxury of having tenure. And indeed, we do, we're doing this study between USC and UCLA. Um, we have 20 subjects, a couple of MDs, PhD candidate in psychology, JD, full-time teacher, full-time caregiver, full-time students. People with schizophrenia. CEO of a not-profit. I mean, it's amazing. There are highly a lot of people functioning. highly functioning. Highly when did functioning. you have your first psychotic experience? You know, I guess it was probably when I was about 16. Um, one day in the middle of classes, I just got this notion that I should be walking. And I just walked out of class and started walking home, which was about five miles away. And as I was walking, I started getting the sense that the houses I was walking by were communicating with me. They weren't talking to me, they were putting thoughts in my head, but it was the house's thoughts and not mine. You are bad, you are especially bad, repent, stand still. Just scared, scared me to death. How scary for you, right? Very scary. Yeah, Very it really scary. must have been. You've been able to get through this with medication, psychotherapy, and you say fulfilling work and a strong network of support. Correct. What about that medication? You know, the medication is so important. I went for about 10 years trying to get off of it two or three times a year. The way I could prove that I really wasn't mentally ill, which I desperately wanted to believe, was by getting off medication. So I tried time and time again and would undertake each effort with great gusto and fail miserably. And fail miserably means what happened? I would quickly become very psychotic. Um, and that meant what to you? Disorganized, confused thoughts, fear, terror, um, anxiety, uh, uh, beliefs that were not supported by reality um, is really very scary. So now, but now, yeah. but if I can say now yes. that I'm on medication continuously, my life is much, much better. Um, but now, do you ever have those moments where you want to get off it still? Every once in a while, I have a thought, well, maybe I should try to reduce the dose. And then I catch myself and say, you know, you need this, stay on it, your life is much better. I can imagine you told me every single day you're going through therapy. That must help you also stay on it. How, what's that like? Absolutely. I, I'm in five day a week psychoanalytic psychotherapy and have been for decades. Uh, it's been enormously supportive, enormously helpful. I believe that. I need both medication and therapy to be as uh, high achieving and successful as I have been, as well as you mentioned having very supportive and caring friends and a, a workplace that's both intellectually stimulating and very nurturing at the same time at USC. You are a highly intelligent person. Oxford, oh, Yale, SC, these grants for being a genius. Okay. And it sounds like the other people you worked with are genius as well. So is there a correlation? You know, uh, Kay Jamison, a bipolar psychology, psychiatry professor, has written a book called Touch With Fire, and there are a lot of geniuses and artistic people who have bipolar illness. With schizophrenia, it's much less common. There aren't that many forebears. You know, you've got John Nash, Gogol, a couple of other people. John Nash, of course, is the guy who was right. in the movie, A Beautiful Mind. Exactly. And since you brought that up, for us as we watch, just not knowing, right. he, he had imaginary friends who right. were always with him. Is that realistic? Is that what's going you know, on? No, not really. Um, people with schizophrenia, if they have hallucinations, tend to have uh, auditory hallucinations. And if they have visual hallucinations, they tend to be very brief and fleeting. 
So there was no, if you read Beautiful Mind, the book, there was no roommate. It was just a device in the movie to kind of take you in and not have you not really know what's real and what's not real and to visually portray something that may have been going on in his mind kind of in terms of thoughts but not visions. You know, I think such a beautiful thing that you moved on. You were told you could do nothing but menial labor. You introduced everyone to your husband in that yeah, clip. Yeah. How did you introduce your husband to the fact you have schizophrenia? That's a great question. Um, and I didn't tell him right away. I kept it very quiet yeah. for most people until I got close to them and felt like I could trust them. The interesting thing is I sat him down and I said, I have something to tell you. And I, I told him, you know, I have a mental illness. I have schizophrenia. I've been hospitalized. I'm on medication. He said, you know, I thought there might have been something like that. And he's the only person who didn't say, oh, impossible. And either he was knew me better and sensed a kind of fragility, or he was just feeling that he could be more frank than my other friends could be. I didn't take it as an insult or anything like that. I took it as, as a, a sign of great caring and so really being attuned to me. So you're using some of the Genius Grant Award to fund a research center at USC. That's Tell right. us about that. Um, it's called the Sachs Institute for Mental Health Law Policy and Eth Ethics. And we pick an issue at the intersection of mental health law and ethics every year. The first year we studied mechanical restraints. I was tied down for 20 hours, day after day, several hours a day for weeks. Um, the second topic was psychotropic meds and the law, anything from right to treatment to right to refuse treatment to medication in kids. This coming year, we're going to do criminalization of mental illness, which is how, how and why, well, the national scandal that the biggest psychiatric hospitals in the country are LA County Jail and Rikers Island in New York. That's just a scandal. We have to figure out ways to fix that. So interesting that you say that. So the LA County Jail, just to drive it home, has more people with mental illness in it than a And hospital. the other psychiatric hospital in the country. Incredible. We want to show your book. Thanks. Here it is. The Thanks. Center Cannot Hold is the title. Where can people find this book? Uh, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Okay, good. And then I'll yeah. give a better description. It is such a rare opportunity for someone to be so open about thank schizophrenia. You. Why did you decide to be so well, open? Thank you at Fox for wanting to do a story not just about the sensational, horrible stories, but more hopeful and successful stories. And why are you so willing to talk about it? You know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, a friend said, you know, you want to become known as a schizophrenic with a job. And I thought, well, I can't, could never write anything that might have more impact than this. And I wanted to give people hope and understanding. And I think the reception I've gotten has been incredibly kind and supportive. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank we you. really appreciate it. And we did learn for sure, right? Thank you. Jeff? Thank you so much. <laughs> what, a, what a great interview. Wow. I mean, how could you Got not learn something from that?